Ocarina of Time is a very busted game. I never realized how many things you can get away, but over the years watching speedrunners perform any glitches and tricks to beat the game in record times got me wondering, am I skilled enough to do these glitches too? Today we'll be doing these glitches on the Nintendo online service version of The Legend of Zelda. Don't ask me what version this is, because at the time of recording, I didn't even bother to look into what version this is. I know there's multiple versions of Ocarina of Time, but from my understanding, most of these glitches can be performed across the different versions of Ocarina of Time, including Master Quest. Don't quote me. I just want you to know I am a casual gamer. I do not consider myself a speedrunner, a master race god level gamer, PC gamer, whatever. I just want you to know you can do these glitches too they're not impossible they take time but again we are on the nintendo switch online service where we can constantly retry and retry and retry just do a save state but i just want to show off what glitches i was able to get done i'm going to show off the few that i couldn't do and i will also name a few also i will will not be using the official names of these glitches i will be making up my own names but in the bottom corner somewhere on the screen i will post the official name of the glitch um with that said let's dive into it and also don't forget to like comment subscribe if you want to see more videos like this i'm trying to branch out into different videos you know normally i just upload gameplays but i actually want to dive into something different on this channel like do voiceover on gaming tricks tips trivia knowledge stuff like that but y'all heard me ran enough let's get right into it All right, everybody know that to leave the forest early, it usually involves the glitch known as the infinite sword glitch. There's a other way to get out of the forest early. You can go to Zora, the entrance to the Zora's river in the Kokiri forest. Normally you would use a glitch known as the Navi dive. Right here, I can't get Navi to call on, want to say anything to me, so I'm gonna go back and go get the Kokiri sword. You, to use a Navi dive, you will get set yourself up on the edge of this platform right here, just like I'm doing right now, and then you would hit up B. So while your sword is drawn, you will hit up on your control stick and the B button, the sword button, whatever you got it mapped to or set to, and then you would immediately, you will fall. You will fall into the lake, the little pond. Immediately start jamming, like go crazy on that sword button. Link will perform a jump slash. As he's doing a jump slash, start flicking up on your right stick, or for those that got lucky enough to get their hands on the Nintendo 64 controller, jam that up C button. Answer Navi's call. Once you do that, Link will immediately fall back off the edge of the platform and he will fall into the pond. Once Navi's done running her mouth off, immediately swim through the loading zone, and voila, you're in Zora's domain. Okay, while we're here, what would you say if I told you you can get into Zora's Domain early without the Ocarina of Time or the Fairy Ocarina? To do that, we're gonna make our way down the river, go get a chicken, bring that chicken back up the river, and we're gonna position ourselves in ever so slightly in the way I have on the screen. I'm going to slow it down so you can see how it's done, and we're going to find our way through the river by exploiting a barrier. It's a hidden little wall right here that stretches as far as the river but there's a little gap that we can go through we're going to take the rooster float our way through the river and bam we are in Zora's domain early as a child haven't even defeated the Deku tree yet for the OG way of exiting the forest early we are turning our attention to the infinite sword glitch ISG for short this glitch puts Link in a state where he's constantly swinging his sword and it's this glitch com combined with the bomb glitch which we will get into later in this video opens the door to a lot of things for Link to get to and you know places that's normally out of his reach etc etc but to activate ISG we have to well let's really really think about it you know how you do a crouch short you know, you have your shield out, and you, you know, and you tap the sword button and Link does a little crouch stab. Which we also gonna get into that because this move is actually pretty goddamn busted in his own right. Link, if that animation is interrupted while Link is stabbing, you know, like he's interacting with a sign or talking to somebody, Z targeting, calling Navi, etc. That's how you activate ISG. There's plenty, plenty of videos 
over the internet that can probably explain it better than I'm trying to explain it right now. But remember, I'm just a casual gamer, so I'm trying to explain it to other gamers that's on my level of, you know, we not all above and beyond or whatever. But again, interrupting the crouch stab will produce the infinite sword glitch. You know the glitch is active because the camera gets, it gets weird. It zooms out. You know, it's not normally behind Link. And then you'll also see Link, you know, a little white line constantly swinging around Link's sword. Um, while you are in ISG, you can't fall off ledges. Again, remember I mentioned this glitch combined with the bomb glitch opens doors. We're gonna get into that real soon. But anyway, to escape the forest early, this little this guy is blocking us right here. We're gonna position ourselves against the wall in an angle where we can crouch stab the wall. We're gonna ricochet off the wall, and while we're doing that, you should be jamming the, the A button, the talk button. You'll talk to the Kokiri. If you do this correctly, Link will be stuck inside the Kokiri for you know he'll be stuck inside the Kokiri, Kokiri while he's talking to hell. That's when you know you did the glitch right. Once you exit that talk dialogue, the Kokiri will be pushed further into the tunnel. You still can't get around him. I know some speedrunners, they're able to get him up on the edge to the right or the left and then they can quickly roll up under him. But we don't have to do all that because again, we're just casual gamers. You're going to take the Kokiri, move him over to the left, and then ever so slightly just walk him in between the grass and the tunnel and he'll fall into a gap in the floor. Bam! You just got out of Kokiri's forest early. And as an extra bonus, the um, flag right here when you go through this tunnel, it will assume you defeated the Great Deku Tree, defeated Goma, and Saria will give you the Fairy Ocarina. So there's that as an added bonus. So now that we got ISG out the way and Bomb Hover out the way, now let's go get the bombs before we even go to Hyrule Castle. We're gonna go over to Kakariko Village. There's two known ways that I'm aware of how to get into the well early. You can use Navi Dive or you can use the Cocos combined with the Infinite Sword Glitch. Navi Dive real quick because for me that was more easier for me to perform. But during the time when I originally got the footage for this video, I did master the infinite sword glitch and I was able to use the Coco trick and I will explain that. I just don't have the footage for it. To do the Navi dive, it's the same thing. We're gonna get our sword ready, position ourselves on the well's edge, and we're gonna hit up B, call on the Navi. We're gonna fall into the whale's water and we're just gonna swim on in into the loading zone. Our purpose for being in the well early is to get the bomb shoes. That's on the basement floor. So the trick to getting the bomb shoes is we need to get through this floor right here. But we don't have the bombs to blow a hole in the floor yet. So we're gonna glitch our way from the bottom to do that. We're going to activate what's called the actor's glitch. This trick is performed by going through one of these tunnels in the well. When you come out of the tunnel, you'll notice the camera angle facing Link in a way that's not normally behind him. There's a door as soon as we go through this tunnel right here. As soon as we come out, we gotta quickly roll to the door without the camera shifting. I must mention we need a small key for this door. And also, if you actually go through the door, you won't be able to perform the actor's glitch. To avoid going through the door, I spam backflips. It usually worked for me over 50% of the time. You'll know the glitch is active because you will use up the key, but you won't actually be in the next room. Go back through the tunnel and you'll notice a giant skull is encircling the room and also the water you're running through isn't making any sounds. Go back to the beginning of the dungeon and jump into the pool of water and go through the tunnel. We need to go into the room and fight this abomination so we can exit and get the room to reload its enemies. Once the spider is back, the next glitch I'm gonna do is wall clipping. This is done by hitting down A while falling. I'm gonna hit up on the controller stick. Link will briefly clip into the wall. Because we don't have bombs yet to damage ourselves, I'm gonna use the spider to hit me while I'm clipping through this wall here to fall out of bounds into the basement of the well. For this setup, we're gonna Deku Nut the spider 
climb onto the wall and immediately on the control stick down one left three and as the spider wakes up drop and grab the wall as the spider hits you if done correctly basement here we come as always practicing helps but trust me this isn't as hard as what's next falling down here you'll notice you can look up and see the floor above us as we fell from this chest here holds our precious shoes and yes we're gonna float right up there the water from the first floor stretches all the way to the basement and after trial and error we can eventually get into this room and bingo the shoes are ours for the taking One more thing I would like to go over real quick. Normally, once we get the bomb shoes, we will go to the dongles cavern and do what's called a mega flip to get the bomb bag chest. But we don't even need to do all that. We just need to bomb open the cavern and navigate through it like normal until we get to this room. Without the slingshot, you just have to avoid the hitboxes on these fire pillars as you cross through the room. I never came across this on the internet, so I thought it was impossible, but here I am performing it. You can do this. It just takes a lot of trial and error. I just wanted to share this real quick. Alright, I mentioned it a couple of times earlier in the video, I want to finally get into the technique known as Bomb Hover. Bomb Hover is used combined with ISG, Infinite Sword Glitch, remember that. You combine the two techniques to perform Bomb Hover. Basically, Link drops a bomb, does a backflip, catch explosion, he hovers. Remember, when you are in ISG, you cannot fall off edges. So, from my understanding, the way I'm going to explain it is, when you go to do the backflip and you put your shield up, Link gets stuck in the air because he can't fall from heights. Infinite sword glitch. I'm just going to show it right here real quick. And it's not a frame perfect technique. Anybody can do it. It just takes a couple practices. Also, once you start bomb hovering, the camera sucks. Like, you really can't see your position when you're doing it. And again, you have to do the backflip as the bomb explodes while shielding. But it's kind of hard to see that if you can't see but there's a trick to it your hearts pulsate they pulsate on a set time i found out if you drop the bomb as soon as the part goes inward and then you use that to be a counter so it pulsates one two three as soon as it's about to pulsate for the fourth time i would initiate the backflip while shielding that usually works or you can count four seconds i feel like the heart pulsating trick that works best you'll get to a point where using the bomb hover is, is so easy it's the infinite sword glitch activating that actually bothers me all right before we go to all the cool and awesome things we can do with the bombs early i just want to go over bottles real quick Bottles have special properties in this game too, and there's something that you can do with the bottles that can give you any item you want in the game provided you do a certain setup. I never was able to do it, cause it's just too goddamn complex for me. But there is something simple we all can do with the bottle, and it's called Ocarina Glitch, or Items Glitch. To do it, you need to get a bottle, get something inside a bottle, whether it be a fish, a bug, whatever, 
drop the contents of the bottle back onto the ground, pick it back up with the bottle. Now that the bottle is in Link's hand, let's do a backflip. As the backflip animation is going, hit the bottle button and any of your C buttons that Link can hold the item in hand or even your sword will do. And you should go right into your ocarina animation. You don't even have the ocarina, but Link is going to play the ocarina with it be his sword, the bomb chews, again, whatever item that Link is able to hold in his hand that you are able to hit. And if you have any ocarina songs, you can play them. Cool. Of course, because we have the bomb choose, we can now get the bomb back earlier than intended. Using the choose, we'll gain entry into the Dongo's cavern and navigate it as normal. Because we don't have the Goron's bracelet for the bomb flowers, the choose will be used in their place. But because we have a limited number of them, we mustn't go crazy with them. When we get to the room with the bomb bag chest, we will set up for the mega flip. We do this by pulling out a chew and line it up like you see here. Timing is key, and when the chew flashes red for the seventh time, drop it. Hold shield, roll towards the chew, and then immediately backflip. If done correctly, the blast will launch you across the gap and onto the ledge with the chest. The timing isn't that tight, and after a few tries, you will eventually get it. It's definitely easier than trying to jump from flaming pillar to flaming pillar. Trust me. Now that we finally got the bomb bag, there's nowhere in Hyrule we can't go or reach. Earlier in the video, I explained ISG in that combined with bomb hover. You can reach areas that are too high or far, such as the forest temple as Child Link. To perform a bomb hover, again, we drop two bombs close enough where the blast can hit our shield back to back. This is easily achieved by shield dropping a bomb, then immediately side hopping to drop a second bomb. This way the fuse on the bombs is only mere seconds apart from one another. When the first bomb goes off while in the middle of your backflip, the second bomb blast will lock Link in the air. At this point you will be in bomb hover and will not need a second bomb's explosion to gain height. Remember, the heart trick I explained earlier? This is key to mastering this technique. As long as you backflip and the blast hits your shield, you will continue gaining height. The greater your timing, the higher you will go per blast. Note to self, if you hit sword or backflip without getting caught in the blast, you will fall, so be careful. Also obviously, bombs, which I like to call glitch ammo, is your only limitation to using bomb hover. Once inside the forest temple, as long as you got glitch ammo, you can move through the temple freely. Child Link can even get to the boss room using wall clipping which is 10 times easier using the bomb shoes by dropping them as you fall and immediately grabbing the wall again as the blast goes off. You'll be knocked into the basement and all you have to do is ever so slightly walk into the loading zone. The slingshot works just like the bow and if you got the boomerang it completely wrecks Phantom Ganon. You can enter the chamber of sages but the following cutscene will not play. Quick mention. Earlier I said there's nowhere in Hyrule we can't go or reach. I meant that all loading zones are active in the game, but depending on the area you're currently in will be re unreachable such as the forest temple, needing a hook shot or boulders blocking the fire temple. But we have bombs now so we ain't trying to hear all that. Using three mega flip set setups as shown here, we can barely make it to the fire temple. The number of hearts increases the time Link can be in hot areas, so be sure to collect those heart pieces. Also, bottle fairies help. Most rooms in the temple are hot, but can be navigated if you're quick enough. The only room that's going to definitely give you a headache is this room here. Link is too short to reach this ledge here, and because of the firewall chasing us, as well as the heat in the room, there's not enough time to bomb hover. So now is the time I will teach you how to bomb hover using bomb shoes. 
Bomb chew hover is actually faster than normal bomb hover because when you drop a chew in the air, it explodes right away. I found that using the slingshot in combination with the chew hover, the timing is incredible. Pull out the slingshot, hold L target, and backflip. While still backflipping with the slingshot in hand, drop a chew and immediately hold shield. If done correctly, you will not have only gained height but distance. Keep your cool and repeat it until you reach the ledge. After that, play the temple as normal. Once you collect the Megaton Hammer, go ahead and equip it. <laughs> yeah, you heard me right. Equip it. Equip Swamp is another useful glitch that lets Link equip items that he can't normally equip. This glitch is 100% frame perfect, so don't get upset if you can't do it right away. It took me probably an hour first time, but with practice I shaved it down to around 10 minutes. It's done by hovering over an item like the hammer you can't equip. Go to the map menu using Z to scroll back to the item menu and as the screen is just about to finish transitioning completely, equip the hammer to any of your C buttons. If done correctly, Den's fire will try to equip but you will equip the hammer instead. I found you'll know you're close to performing the glitch if the screen transitions to the item in your own Den's fire. You should always be in the corner. Keep in mind that the glitch will end if you unequip Den's fire. So be careful. You can play the rest of the dungeon as normal. I thought I was stuck in this room right here because I didn't have the Song of Time. But I was able to use my hammer and still activate the switch. You can defeat the boss. But unless you have at least 8 hearts with 2 bottled fairies and also make nearly no mistakes, it won't be happening. You can enter the chamber too and the cutscene will play as normal, so that's neat. But when you return to the crater, it'll be the adult version and it won't load visually. But regardless, you can move freely through this area. We can even enter the Great Fairy's Fountain that's normally blocked with boulders, but hey, we already got the hammer equipped anyway, so that ain't an issue. Getting to Lake Hylian is simple by either coming through the path from Zora's Domain after winning the scale or bomb hover from Hyrule Field. You might be thinking that, Zero, how can you bomb hover into the water temple when it's underwater? Easy. Head over to the researcher's house and line yourself up with the house like so, and Link's head should appear like this, clipping through the house. Do a 180 and L target. If done correctly, you will be out of bounds within the researcher's house. Taking it a step further, if you jump into the hole in the ground, you will fall into a void of water with areas that you can fall even even further down into. The trick is to fall deep enough but not too deep or you avoid out and swim back into the void of water and simply swim into the loading zone. I found falling in this spot here and keep pulling yourself back and forth from the void of the water it will get you deep enough and tapping B quickly makes this easy but whatever method works go for it. Once inside, you can bomb hover over to the boss door. Without the key, you can even enter the room by using bomb hovers and blasting yourself so that you clip into the door and simply walk into the loading zone, like here. Young Link can beat this boss without the hook shot, but it's extremely tedious. <laughs> Jumping into the water and climbing out will make Morpher hop around the pool. Spinning like... Sorry, spin attack like crazy and eventually Morpher will die if you don't die first because honestly I couldn't take it down. I just couldn't do it. I lost patience but I'll tell you the cutscene of the chamber plays and the game continues just fine. Moving past temples, let's go back to bombs. There's two other techniques you can do with bombs. Bomb sliding and bomb hopping. Bomb sliding is done the same way you would prepare for a bomb hover and mega flip, but instead you'll roll towards the bomb while holding shield and tipping to pick up the bomb. When the blast goes off, Link get pushed backwards at an incredible speed as long as you continue holding shield. The key is looking at the action of the A button. Action should be present and on your second roll, grab should appear. This is fairly easy to do, so have have fun. Bomb hopping is just as easy too. Same setup as bomb sliding but we don't have to try to pick up the bomb. Just roll towards the bomb and if you get this animation, which I believe you'll get plenty of times while trying the bomb slide, you did it. You successfully stored a bomb hop and the next time you do a backflip, Link will jump in place instead. This can be used when child Link needs a little height to grab those edges that he could easily grab as an adult. 
Remember again, I said there's nowhere we can't go in Hyrule. As long as we got bombs and that all loading zones are active in the world, we can do it. No matter the error, Adult Link 2 can enter Jabu Jabu and the Great Deku Tree. The setup is too ridiculous for me to perform for Jabu Jabu, but I was able to get into the Deku Tree. As you see, the Great Deku Tree's mouth is closed, but that loading zone is definitely active. Because the Deku Tree is actually considered a different room within this split of forest area, we gotta enter the room in a way unattended so that the vision don't load and to do that we are going to bomb hover let's get an isg going and head up to this house right here you can actually just hover onto this ledge here too using isg we will walk to the absolute edge once discovered we need to get a running start jump and do an aerial jump slash into the hallway leading to the deku tree if done correctly the area's visuals won't load but the deku tree's mouth will be open now go ahead and answer it to get to the boss you'll need to do a fancy setup just watch the screen real quick Yeah, seriously, you gotta do this setup. Seven side hops, vertical sword swing, backflip, side hop, then grab the platform and sink into the floor. Hit A, then immediately hit B to knock off the wall and fall into the basement to land perfectly into the boss door loading zone. I'm telling you right now, this took me hours to do over the course of several days. At one point, without the setup, the gaming gods blessed me to be in the exact spot to pull it off. The setup guarantees that you will always be in that right spot, but but believe me, I believe in y'all. We casual gamers, I'm telling you, we can pull this off. Again, save states help. Just keep trying. You'll get it. You'll figure it out. You'll master it. Speaking of setups, you can actually skip the door of time. We all seen this opening through the door. Well, yes, your childhood mind was right. We can get through this opening and it's another ridiculous setup, but <laughs> I'm not going to show y'all that because I, I, I didn't even bother to try it. I can't do it. I found a much simpler way that I want to show you guys. And so instead, with that said, I would like to teach you the lunge storage. You see, when Link does a jump slash and falls off of a ledge after hitting up B, he will fall and store a lunge. So the next time link does a jump slash he'll move a couple of inches forward using this technique and putting ourselves in the absolute right right spot as the ridiculous setup will have with a jump slash link will scooch right on through the door no stones needed this one took me a decent time to pull off but honestly it wasn't that difficult i'm telling you save states really help so definitely use it also when you become an adult you'll see that the door is still closed but don't freak out just hard save the game reset the game boot the file back up and you'll respawn on the other side of the door on top of the pedestal good luck becoming a child again though because that door is still sealed and there is a way to get through the door as adult link but that requires another ridiculous setup and honestly you're not playing the game to go back and forth as a child and an adult so i mean <laughs> who needs it but hey it's on the internet if you want to go look it up and if you can do it in the comments tell me you did it just so i can be inspired myself to go do it so I just showed y'all all the glitches that I was able to do. There are some glitches I didn't get footage of during the time of the recording that unfortunately won't be added in this video. But I do plan on doing a live stream of me doing the glitches, a playthrough in sorts, you know, a casual little run through the game with glitches. Um, I plan to be present on YouTube for the next couple of weeks well really during the winter season because i'm a carpenter i stay up north so as you know it snows and that slows down work so i i i don't look at it as a bad thing it's just hey more time i'm here back making some videos um most of the videos i've been uploading lately well i'm sorry recently period are gameplay videos like just me playing a game no voices none of that type of stuff I'm looking to try to change the format on this channel. Like, I'm still going to do videos where I'm just playing a game, you know, playthroughs. 
but I want to start doing voiceovers, like reactions in the video, or something like what I'm doing right now, you know? Um, that all comes to you guys, if the demand is high. Um, we'll post it right here. As you can see, this is how many subscribers are actually subscribed to the channel, that's watching the channel, and then these are the people that's not subscribed that's watching the channel. That number's greater than my non-subscribers. No, no biggie. I mean, nothing about it. It's just... Y'all, if you like the video, and I'm guilty of it, I gotta do better. If you're watching the video, and you like that video, like it's of any type of interest to you, I'm not even asking for a subscribe. But if you could slap that like button, or even leave a comment, that really helps the algorithm get this video out to other people's, so they can see the video. And then they might like it, or share it, or comment, you know? Hey, and if you do subscribe, that's awesome, you know? Thumbs up to it. By the time this video goes up, it will be Thanksgiving Day. If you're seeing this video, I hope you're enjoying your Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, happy holidays, be safe, all that good stuff. And hey, if you come back to the channel, I'll see you then. And if not, hopefully I will see you in the future, you know? Infinite is signing out. Thank you for watching. See you next time.